happy little games. This is a Patman QC service announcement. If you have been enjoying my range of documentaries, be sure and give me a thumbs up. According to my trusty but perhaps rusty Google Analytics, only about 5% of you are actually doing this. It only takes a few seconds and I really would appreciate it. Thank you so much. The Era of the Crossover Growing up reading comic books, there was nothing cooler than seeing various superheroes teaming up to take down those evil, dastardly villains. Batman teaming up with a legion of superheroes. Superman teaming up with Spider-Man or The Punisher meets Archie. Hollywood was no different in their attempt to merge two mega franchises together with the likes of Frankenstein meets the Wolfman or Who Framed Roger Rabbit with all of its various cameos. Today though, we are talking about an entirely new set of IPs that once put together created another classic arcade beat-em-up. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about Superman meets Batwoman, although I wish I was. Hubba hubba. I'm talking about Alien vs. Predator, the 1994 arcade classic by Capcom. What was the original idea behind the creation of this game? So grab your laser rifle and watch your radar, because this is the history of Alien vs. Predator. The year is 1993 and Capcom designer Tetsuya Lajima has been tasked with creating an arcade game based on the company's newest IPs, Alien vs. Predator. The development of this game was taking place right in the middle of Capcom's golden years, which included the Street Fighter franchise, The Punisher, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, and Captain Commando. There had been some attempts at converting the two franchises individually into video game form starting with 1982's Alien for the Atari 2600. There was a better effort put forward with the 1986 Aliens for the Commodore 64 and the 1990 arcade game Aliens by Konami. The dreadlocked baddie from outer space had his first outing on the home computers with 1987's Predator. But to be honest, the less said about this game, the better. To coincide with Predator 2 in the theaters, Predator 2 was released for the various 8-bit and 16-bit micros. While nowhere near as bad as the original Predator game, this was simply an Operation Wolf clone. Alien vs. Predator started out life as a comic book in 1990 by Dark Horse Comics. The book was well received and would go on to spawn several sequels. In mid-1993, a planned movie that would feature both characters was in development and looked to be released in 1994. Capcom had wanted to capitalize on this and release the game to coincide with the movie's debut. But unfortunately, the movie kept getting delayed. It would take another 10 years before an Alien vs. Predator movie hit the big screen, and even then it was a completely different script than what was used to develop the arcade game. Alien vs. Predator was released in the arcades in 1994 by Capcom. The game runs on the CPS2 board and takes full advantage of all of its power. The game is a three-player simultaneous beat-em-up that is spread across seven levels. As the story goes, the town of Sandrad, California, which I believe is nearby Otisburg. It's Otisburg? It's a little bitty place. Otisburg? Has been overrun by aliens. The two human characters, Major Dutch Schaefer, who just happens to look like a certain action star from the first Predator movie, and Lieutenant Lin Kurosawa have been left behind by their superiors. After being cornered by a group of aliens, two lone predators sweep in and save the day, offering an alliance in the process. 
The controls are fairly straightforward with one button to attack, one button to jump, and one button to fire your weapon. There are four characters to choose from, including Major Dutch Schaefer, who is the strongest of the characters but also the slowest. Lieutenant Len Kurosawa is the quickest of the four characters and also the most agile. She is also a cyborg that can access every martial art. Predator Hunter is the younger of the two species. He has an excellent diving attack, but his recovery is not quite as quick as the Predator Warrior. The Warrior is the best fighter in the game, in my opinion, who has a quicker recovery time and a longer range of attacks. Three of the four characters have a melee weapon. Lin has a katana, a bladed staff for Hunter, and an extendable retractable spear for the Warrior. Dutch does not have any weapons he can use, instead using his cybernetic arm to hit enemies with. He can also pick up fallen weapons and swing them around, which is something other characters cannot do. All of the characters are equipped with projectile weapons for quick fire attacks. Lin has a rapid fire handgun, Dutch has a smart gun, and the Predators use shoulder mounted energy weapons just like in the movie. Various weapons can also be picked up along the way either by finding them or from fallen enemies such as grenade launchers and flamethrowers. There are also jewels to pick up for bonus points or food to restore your health. One of the first things you notice when starting up the game is how large the character sprites are. Everything looks fantastic with plenty of colors and silky smooth animation. The pixel art is just phenomenal and is one of my favorites from Capcom during this era. Everything looks really good from the Predators, to the Xenomorphs, to the exceptionally detailed background. There are also zombies and humans you have to fight all throughout the game. One very fun aspect of the game is that each character plays extremely different with each one having their own different strengths and weaknesses. This increases the replay value immensely as you try to master each different character. As I mentioned, there are seven stages in total with you being thrown onto the streets of Sandrad and right into the thick of the action immediately against the various aliens. I haven't seen this much face hugging since I got to third base with my first girlfriend. The various levels include taking you below the city, An old subway station. <laughs> fighting on top of an APC. <laughs> the jungle. And then finally taking on the big bad herself, the Alien Queen. The music is fantastic as well and is composed by Hideki Okugawa, who is best known for doing the soundtrack on all three Street Fighter 3 games. The game was another huge success for Capcom, but unfortunately no conversions were ever produced. Rumor has it that a 32X version was in development, but due to the failure of Sega's add-on, this never materialized. There was an unrelated Alien vs Predator Super Nintendo game by Capcom which came out in 1994. While entirely different than the arcade game, it's still a fun beat em up to play with excellent graphics and playability. The character of Lieutenant Kurosawa would go on to have various cameo appearances including Street Fighter Alpha 2, Street Fighter 3 Second Impact, and the Namco Capcom series. 
Due to licensing issues, the game has never been re-released on any platform or compilations. Nika released a toy line based on the arcade game in 2017. These figures are really well done, and if you are a fan of the series and toys, you should really check them out. And that takes care of the history of Alien vs. Predator. The only way to play this game is to find it in the wild or fire up your MAME emulator and give it a go. The fun factor is a 10, especially when you have two other people playing. It would have been nice to play as an alien even for just a level, but overall the game is fantastic and is one of my favorites to play, especially with my son. If you've never had a chance to experience a little face hugging and blast Aliens Amundo, then this is the game for you. Give it a shot. You'll be glad you did. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, if you'd like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Thank you so much for watching.